Well Ross, thanks for joining us. Difficult week, disappointing result. What about that performance? That Dave really disappointed uh, and disappointing in the in the way that we uh, the way that we performed. Um, I thought the boys had a go. I thought in the first half they we looked on the on the verge of an okay performance. Um, the message at half time was we looked a little bit edgy and nervy and a little bit slow and and, and made sort of unforced errors if, if they, for the want of a better phrase at times, uh, which I suppose can be expected to a degree. Um, and that sort of summed up our first half. I thought we were very nearly able to create, create chances. Never created anything clearly. We were very nearly to. Near, sorry, to putting them under a little bit more pressure than perhaps we did. Um, obviously, a fantastic strike gives them the lead and, and, and something to, to defend for. So um, it's obviously a disappointing way to go to go one down. Although it's full credit to, to the lad that scored it. So yeah, I thought it was a bit of a first half, and then and then second half we sort of never really found our river. And once again, I imagine we were disappointed with the way in which those goals were conceded. Yeah, uh, the first goal. I haven't watched it back, but the first goal uh, I think obviously comes from a corner, and it looked, looked as if it was taking us some time to get to grips of who we were marking, where our men were, that sort of thing. But I don't know if directly that actually affected the goal. The boy, it's an absolute wonder strike from the distance that he does into the top corner. So I think it would be uh, unfair to him for me to take that credit away from him. Albeit we would like to have been organised probably a little bit quicker, but that's something we'd have to look at. And I think. With the second goal, certainly James is out of position. Um, we leave ourselves open at the back, but that was almost, I'll say the intention. My intention wasn't to leave us open at the back. It was to, to try to get James Brophy in that position where Dan was. We might be a little bit more of a natural attacker at left back um, to try to build us some momentum going forward and, and obviously that left us open. Just how difficult has this week been for the players? It's been tough, Dave, but um, you know I'm sure 100% of them have, have all been through a change of manager and all been through a change of circumstances. So, of course, it's been tough. It's been tough for everybody because we've come into today's, into today's game with one day's preparation in terms of myself, Danny and Joby putting that preparation into the lads. So, by no means has it been ideal for anybody. Um, but what we can't do, and the message to the boys after the game was, was that that can't be our excuse. We can't use that excuse. We can't fall back on that excuse because it's too easy. It's too easy to, to use that and, and blame that. So we've got to come in Monday morning ready to work, ready to try to adjust and try to sort of find our identity again in terms of trying to build in, you know, into where we want to go and to put some more points on the board. It's obviously been very difficult with Carl Fletcher here, but will you have learnt as a coach working with Carl Fletcher? Have I? Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. I, I, you try to learn from everybody, Dave. I've worked for some people that um, I haven't got on with in, in my career before and I've taken from those people and um, hopefully it's made me a better coach when I've when I've come to, to this club and the jobs that I've that I've done in the past building that up. So certainly yes I, I, I feel I probably have. You take the, the good and the bad from everybody, hopefully that you know some people would, would, would do the same from me. So I think you'd be very close minded if, if you didn't try to try to adjust and try to take and, and develop from anybody that you work with. And did it give you time to reflect on your early decision that you didn't want to be the late night manager? Not, not, but well, I reflected 100% because um, I felt it was my responsibility to myself and and the way that I'd made decisions and the way that I'd worked as a as the interim manager here before. So that was a process that I probably started once I decided that I didn't want to take the job on a permanent basis. So um, I learned a lot about myself during that period. And and what I didn't want to be for Carl was I didn't want to be that person that sat there thinking, well, when I did it or when I, I because that would have been irresponsible for me to do that. My uh, my uh, target as soon as he came in, my job, my uh, mindset when, when he came in here was to give him all the support that he needed in order to be successful. So I didn't want that to be something that maybe hung over him and then at the same time something that I drove home with every day thinking, well, I would have done it like this, I would have done it like that. that that's foolish and naive because um, you know I should have probably taken the opportunity if I was going to think like that, which, which certainly I didn't. And do you still feel that way? Is it something that you would want to, uh, if the opportunity came that way? Dave, I'll be brutally honest with you, and people will say that I'm avoiding the question. I'm not. I think because of how quickly it came around and, and finding out on Thursday that the decision had been made to, to remove Carl from his position, it, the priority was to get ready yesterday and try to lift the boys' spirits, try to energise the boys and, and bring them into today with, with, with a, uh, you know, a bit, bit life in them to, to try to come out and get some points on the board. So it, I, I'm not, I wouldn't stand here and say uh, that I want to be the late, next late and Orient manager. It's been a case of, of stepping in and making sure that we're fully prepared for, for today. What happens next, I'm sure, will be 
results driven. I'm sure you know how long that that period lasts for will, will, will depend on that, and, and then at the same time, obviously how it looks for, for the board in terms of how quickly or, or, or what more they want to do to to take the club forward. There weren't too many positives, but Lee and Goal coming on, delighted. Um, Delighted in terms of that, I suppose it's um, you know, what, certainly a step forward for us. Probably brought him on a little bit earlier than, than, than perhaps the physio department will be overly happy with. But it's important that we got Lee back and around the squad. We know how, how talented he is, and he know we know what a good player that he's going to be, and, and has already been for us before he got injured. So that's a real positive. I think the other positives is that one or two of the lads have come through today. Sam Ling's got another 90 minutes under his belt, so he'll benefit from that because he's playing, to, I suppose, slightly under under 100%. So. Um, positive on that front but obviously in terms of where the performance was um, albeit I didn't expect us to go from where we where we were maybe last Sunday to to where I wanted us to be that would have been foolish of me to, to believe that was going to be the case but uh, there's lots to work on and lots to, lots to develop. And what about his striking partner Connor Wilkinson? Very close very close people that were in the ground as early as probably yourself today would have seen that Connor was was doing some extensive running. We're hoping that he'll be back and training early this week. How early will depend, I suppose, again on how he how he comes through today. That tends to be my answer when you ask me any questions about injuries, but it certainly is. When we stretch the boys and push them, it's about how they react, and, and the boys have, have stretched him today, so I hope that he comes in fresh on Monday, ready to train Monday or Tuesday. And Joe Widdison? Yeah, Joe picked up a niggle, um, as a number of the lads have in, in the last week or two. Obviously, the same with dates. Uh, and similar to, to, to Connor's sort of little niggly injuries that we hope, hope and hoped that weren't going to keep them out for an extended period of time. So probably answering your next question, but James Dayton and, um, and Joe Widdison, I would hope to see training at the back end of the, uh, back end of the week if, if medically it's, um, we're accurate in going by that. We know each other very well. What about Sir <laughs> Joby McEnough then? <laughs> Joe, uh, he wasn't in the dugout today purely because he's on crutches. He's had another operation. So... I think it's probably one of them questions you might not have to ask me for a little while, Dave. Uh, Jobs is going to be out for an extended period of time, but I think at the forefront of Joby's mind, although he, he was, he's a great help up, upstairs in terms of radioing down his, his information and his input to Danny and I during the game, um, I think that's going to be his role for a little while until hopefully we can get him back. But I do think his, his eyes are firmly fixed on trying to get back as a player. Good to see you back. Thanks, and Dave. good luck. Cheers. Thank you very much. Gosh.